This lecture is focused on Spanish colonization of the New World. The Spanish were the only European power to begin colonizing the New World as soon as it was discovered. On his second voyage, Columbus brought 1,200 men and supplies to what is now called the Dominican Republic, which became the base for all early Spanish exploration of America. Spanish conquistadors began exploring beyond the islands that they originally landed on and found themselves running into the natives of the South American continent. After traveling to Western South America and conquering the Inca people, Francisco Pizarro found a literal mountain made of silver. Which sounds good, right? Well, it was for a time, but those mines would be the downfall of the Spanish Empire. We'll come back to that. The most important Spanish explorer was Hernán Cortés. Cortés landed in modern-day Mexico in 1519, and by 1521 he had conquered the capital city of the Aztec Empire. But how in the world did he accomplish that? Well, it's true that the Aztecs were very powerful, but they also used that power to subjugate many of the other Native American groups in the area. As Cortes traveled towards Tenochtitlan, he recruited Native Americans who were under Aztec control and weren't happy about it. These Native Americans were amazed by Spanish horses and weaponry and were happy to join the Spanish cause. In addition, smallpox and other diseases ravaged the Aztec population, making them weak and unable to defend themselves. By the time Cortes reached Tenochtitlan, it wasn't long before the Aztec rulers surrendered. Once they defeated the Aztecs, the Spaniards built Mexico City on top of the capital of that former empire. This victory, along with the victory over the Inca people in South America, set up the Spanish to take control of most of the indigenous peoples in the region. Because many of the Native American societies were based on a government where there were few rulers at the top, it was easy for Spaniards to take over by installing governors at the heads of those societies. Basically, rather than trying to create a new government, they just took over the existing government. Cortes established the encomienda system, which granted Native American villages to conquistadors in exchange for their services. Native Americans under Spanish control effectively became members of a slave population, especially in South America, where indigenous labor was used in the silver mines. Although African slavery was used in Mexico and the Caribbean islands, the mines were so deadly to work in that it made more sense to force the native population to work there rather than pay for the transport of slaves from across the Atlantic. Now, like I said before, the silver found in South America would eventually be the downfall of the Spanish Empire. Here's what happened. Every year, Spain would send ships filled to the brim with silver to the Philippines, their new islands in East Asia. There, they would trade that silver for luxury goods like silk and spices. The problem was they couldn't control themselves. The influx of unprecedented wealth in Spain led to rapid inflation. In addition to inflation, leaders in Spain used this wealth to wage a series of wars against their European neighbors. That didn't go so well as you might imagine from seeing this picture here of the Spanish Armada on fire. Eventually, the silver started to run out, and Spain was forced into debt, further destroying the country's economy. By the mid-17th century, the nation had lost its international importance. Despite all of the mistakes that the Spanish made while colonizing the New World, they did create a model that would be imitated by other countries in the future. We already talked about how they exploited the Native American population, which would be done by just about every other European power in the Americas as well. The Spanish also attempted to maintain strict control over their colonies in the New World. They did this by controlling who would be allowed to move to America, and by establishing loyal authorities in the colonies to keep an eye on the colonists. Lastly, most Spanish immigrants to America were men, which meant that in order to have kids, they needed to take Native American wives. The mixed race that we have today in Latin America is a direct result of this development. Okay, that's it. Be sure to check out the links and other resources because there's a great supplemental video for this topic from Crash Course World History. Uh, don't forget, if you have questions, leave a comment, bring it to class, fill in your identifications, and take the quiz for video 1-5.